Okay, this is about uh, the Bantu population with regard to calcium and iron, and this will be epidemiology um, lecture number one. Okay, so the Bantu population lives in Africa, and on average, a woman there typically has about nine or ten children. She nurses each child with, for about two years. Uh, for the adult woman, the average uh, calcium intake is about 350 milligrams per day. Uh, she does not eat any dairy products. Yeah, the drawing there, I know it's not uh, the best, but... Um, whereas westernized women are often trying to take well over 1,000 milligrams a day, even over 1,400 milligrams per day of calcium. Uh, the Bantu woman does not have any, uh, does not ingest any dairy products or take any calcium supplements. Um, and the Bantu women have virtually no problem whatsoever with osteoporosis. Uh, calcium supplements can cause problems. Uh, they decrease the activation or conversion of vitamin D from its inactive form to the active form, like 125 hydroxy vitamin D. And it's the active form from which all the good things come. So you don't want it to be unactivated when it should be activated. In addition, calcium supplements have not been shown to have a significant overall improvement in fracture risk. In particular, there's an increased risk of hip fractures. And hip fractures are a big deal because you know, a significant number of people die when they get a hip fracture. Um, after ingesting calcium supplements, you know, the postprandial, postprandial just means after eating, postprandial phase of there's hypertension of about uh, 10 milligrams of mercury uh, increase in blood pressure. There's a transient postprandial prothrombotic effect on the blood because calcium functions like a clotting factor. Okay, so that's not good. You don't want your blood predisposed to clotting because that increases your risk of myocardial infarction. And calcium supplementation has an increased risk of myocardial infarction, depending on what you read from uh, in the ballpark of 25 to 30 percent. There's also an increase in all cause mortality. And a common situation is you'll run into health questions where it's hard to figure out what's the correct way to look at, the correct answer. And a lot of times, look at the global distribution of a disease or an abnormality, see what that correlates to, does it correlate with diet, sunshine, lifestyle, um, other things along those lines. See if there's an identical twin study, quite often that'll clarify if something's genetic or not. There's one other thing that's interesting with regard to the Bantu population. They were well known for having a lot of skill in working with iron materials. And they had traditionally also used iron cookware. And this habit of using iron cookware um, led to many persons becoming iron overloaded. At autopsy studies, about 10% had iron overload in their liver associated with liver failure. Um, Nowadays, they've got other types of cookware that's not as big of a deal of a problem, but it's a reminder to be careful about iron overload. Iron overload is something that a lot of people are not aware of. Um, quite often, iron will be added into all kinds of things, breakfast cereals, it'll be added into multivitamins, so-called fortified iron foods, and it's really not a good idea. I recommend don't eat anything with extra iron in it unless you've specifically been told to supplement in that way uh, by your doc because you're you have an iron deficiency anemia or something like that, but a lot of this extra iron supplementation is not good. Most men in westernized countries are iron overloaded after 50 years of age, quite often much sooner than that. And as a person gets older, it can become a problem. I mean, we store some iron in our body so we can replenish our hemoglobin in the event of massive bleeding, okay? But we don't want iron being free. Iron is a transitional metal and so it has a variable valence like two plus or three plus are the most common valencies and it can cycle back and forth between fe2 plus and fe3 plus and in so doing can generate a lot of reactive oxygen species free radicals associated with increased oxidative stress that's a topic for another day but it's just a reminder anything with iron in it that's actually not a good thing uh, so that was sort of like the two the key points in this epidemiology uh, lecture where we talked about you know, you don't need calcium supplementation. Even Dr. McDougall says there's no such thing as a calcium deficiency in any type of naturally occurring diet. Um, and then the second thing is be careful for iron. I remember when I was young, I used to think iron was a good thing. I wanted to eat the raisin bran cereal that had the extra iron in it. Nowadays, I would definitely avoid that.